it's a pretty simple effect. We've got the text. We've got these things here that add ripple through displacement. Then we've got some blurring going on here and some color adjusting going on here. Then we've got these highlights here. And I want to note about these highlights. These use the Crocodove plugin and you can get that on Reactor. And there's a handful of videos out there on YouTube talking about how to get the Reactor plugins. It's very simple. It's basically a drag and drop. And I'm going to right click, create a new fusion composition. And if I double click on this fusion comp, it'll open up. So just quickly before we get started here, I made a custom toolbar and you might be thinking it doesn't look custom. It looks like the default settings and it basically is the default settings. I just added one node that wasn't there before the displace node. I put it next to the fast noise because I use these together a lot. So there's probably a bunch of tutorials on making custom toolbars. I mean, I know there's at least one cause I watched it and that's how I figured out how to do it. So let's get started with that out of the way. You know what? There is one more thing in the way that we need to get to, and it has to do with preferences. So if you've ever thought to yourself that fusion controls for navigation in the 3d viewer, and even in this viewer here seem kind of dumb, you're right. They are dumb, but you can fix that. So if you go to fusion, you go to fusion settings. There is this thing here, touch and scroll mouse wheel. I think this is the default. So if we check this out, I use a scroll wheel and I scroll up and down, which is pretty much pointless. This should be a zoom and it can be a zoom and it will be a zoom. Fusion settings back here again. So we just switch this here and this has made all the difference in the world for me. This is probably the best change in settings that I've found. And now when I do the scroll wheel, I'm scrolling and I'm zooming in your 3D viewer, you don't have to press control and scroll wheel to zoom anymore. Just to show you how that works, I added a particle emitter and a particle render that I will delete shortly. If I just use a scroll wheel, I've got the same functionality. I'm scrolling without holding down a modifier. This works more like normal 3D apps or other 3D apps, and this is great. Zooms in, click and hold down, you pan. You got the same functionality in here as you do here. Okay, so I've deleted those nodes, and now let's get to what we came here for and we'll add some text. I'm gonna pick some text that really stands out and I just typed liquid there and I'm gonna press two to see this in the viewer. And one thing that I like to do is give myself one big viewer here for my main view and a smaller viewer here that's less important. I can view things down, down the tree that way. That is a uh, small text, so let's make it bigger. I'm gonna pick Alpha Slab 1. Alpha Slab 1 is a free font, but don't just take my word for it. Go to uh, 1001freefonts.com. You know, I heard they just updated it and now they got a 1002 fonts. This is pretty big. Maybe it's a little too big. I'll give myself a little breathing room here. And we can color this with the number one gradient from 1986. And we get that by coming down here, clicking on gradient. This first color will make it magenta. I'm going to hit this drop down here so I could easily get to those colors. Something like that. This middle one, I'm going to click here to add a new stop. I'll make this blue somewhere around there. And then this last one, I'll make this a cyan. And we'll give a little space here. This was the number one gradient in 1986 for 12 straight weeks in a row. So you know it's good. Now let's take a look here. All right, so this is just going straight up. I want to give it an angle here, maybe a little bit more magenta here. So let's bring this out. That should work. Let's now help this text find its place in the world by displacing it. I'm going to click the text to select it and then I'm going to hit my displace button here or if you don't create a custom toolbar like I did just hold down shift space bar DSP that'll get you displace but from now on I'm just going to click on it here. So I got my displace now I want to click and drag a fast noise down here and connect it. Okay, so let's preview this select it press 2. I want to Click on this X, Y here, and I'm going to drag this out and this out. And things are getting offset when you do that. So let's counteract that. 
by dragging our offsets. So I'm gonna click on my fast noise and I'm gonna adjust the scale. And this is way too much. So let's go back into the displays and dial back some of these settings here. I mostly wanna avoid these little pieces sticking out. So I'll take my X and Y, bring them in. I'm gonna add two displaces. So I don't wanna to go too heavy. We've got displacement, but it doesn't move. So nobody wants that. Let's click on our fast noise. I wanna add an expression here. If I right click on center in the drop down, click on expression. So this X value, we don't need to do anything for that. So let's take this number here and change it. Time divided by negative 200. We'll give this a play. All right, so this looks good. If you want us to slow down, you could change the number. Select your noise and displace and copy paste. And now I'm, I'm gonna select my displace here, reduce some of these settings to make it more subtle. All right, and all of these settings can and probably should be adjusted later on. So I don't wanna be too precious at this point. And I think this works good enough now. Now I wanna bend reality back in on itself by taking this original text and merging it. Click on this displace. I'm going to hit the merge icon right here. I like to move this out out of the way and I'm gonna take the output from the text drag it onto the merge I'm going to also just for clarity alt click here and move this over I want to preview this I'm gonna press 2 now if we play this we'll see the original text and it looks like things are dripping down I also just noticed that at this zoom level our text is now spelling equi which is probably Latin for something so if you speak Latin uh, I, I'd be interested in knowing what that is moving on the layer that's on top in a merge I kind of like to see that on top so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag these down below and do something like this that works for me I'm gonna select my merge and I'm gonna do shift space. Very blur is fun because it gives you a blur but it's a blur with some depth to it let's add the very blur I'm going to preview that by pressing two. A lot of times I have to drive this beyond my limits here. So sometimes I'll bring this up to 40. I just want to get it to where I'm getting some nice rounding in here. It's also not a bad idea at this point to turn off my checker background. So I'll hit these three dots and uncheck checker underlay. And no, the rumors are untrue. I am not obsessed with blurs, but I am going to add a second one here. So I'm going to click on this blur here. And this is just going to give me a, a little different variety here. And I'm going to keep this pretty subtle. I'm going to bring this blur up, press two. It's always a good idea to see what you're doing. Now with this blur selected, I'm going to click on on my curves color curves clicking on this pressing two to preview it the first thing I'm gonna do is crush the alpha channel so I'm gonna uncheck everything but alpha and I'm gonna drag this over and it looks like I've done nothing but let's just go back here turn on our checker underlay and if I turn off my color nodes you can see uh, we are getting edge back there and after cleaning up that transparency we can start looking at colors so I'll click on the red, deselect everything else, and I'll click on the red, drag this up. I don't want this to be too red, maybe just a little bit of a boost there. And you can press S to give you a smooth curve. So let's take a look at the greens and I'll press S also, maybe take some of the bright parts of the green down. All right, let's take a look at the blues. Press S to smooth that. You go back through these, you, you make some adjustments. I just try and get a basic shape that I think looks pretty good first. And I like this, it's kind of giving a, a rim lighting effect. And then once that basic shape looks somewhat decent, then I'll come in and add some more points here and see if I can get some interesting results. I kind of like that. It's giving us a little bit of a reflection type look. And at a certain point, you're gonna start making things look worse. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. It's getting more of a sharp reflection. And I don't know how many more points I could add, but I sure will try. Let's go back to the blue one here and check the green, see what we can do with that. We're getting close to diminishing returns here. All right, let's call that a day. All right, let's see what do we have here. Let's do a little quick preview. Okay, so here's our text. It looks a little jittery at the top, but as I mentioned, we can always come back into these nodes here and fix them and I will move on. At this point, we basically have text being distorted around the edges, but we really have no texture inside. So let's focus in on that. 
I'm going to need your complete and utter silence as I engage in a bit of liquid pro quo. You lawyers know what I'm talking about. I'm going to take a fast noise that I've created already. Command C, click over here, Command V. This one, let's press two. If we preview it, it's going down at the rate we want it to, but let's make it a little bit more interesting. Under color, I'm gonna take this alpha and bring it up here. We can give it a color or we can go into the gradient here and do it that way. Let's see what we get out of this gradient here. So let's start putting some blues in here. Maybe make this a light blue. Maybe I'll leave that white in there and I'll just click maybe somewhere around here. All right, so I'll, I'll make some adjustments here. Maybe this white is too bright. Also, I'm gonna go back into the noise section here and maybe give it a little bit more detail. Give it a bit of seethe and let's see what this looks like. Okay, so that's what we got. And I know I'm repeating myself and I know I'm repeating myself, but I don't know how this looks until everything's really done. So I'm gonna to have to come in and make changes later. So I'm gonna take color curves, drag it onto this little blue mask thing here. All right, so it's completely blocking everything. Obviously we've got to merge this back in. So we take the output of the fast noise, drag it to the output of the color curves, drag this output to this output and we get this merge here. And in this merge, let's get a good blend mode. One nice thing about the blend nodes in this section here is you could click on it and then close it and then use the arrow keys to scroll through and see which blend mode gives you the best result. Let's go with soft light. So in the next step, I wanna add some highlights here. This is where you're gonna to need to use the free reactor plugin called Crocodove. I think that's how you pronounce it. Crocodove is a collection of a bunch of different plugins. Some of them are really good. Some of them don't make sense to me. And some of them I'm just, I don't even know like why they're there. But let's go in and add the plastic. So click on merge two, shift space bar, P-L-A-S, T. All right, so this plastic, it's not easy to explain how it works. I'll go through the important settings and I'll try to explain things as best I can. I'm gonna start off by picking a specific channel here, go with the red channel. It's uh, looking for the reds and it's adding this highlight here. Now it's set to merge. I'm gonna set it to add. It's not gonna look a heck of a lot different, but if I drop down this color triangle, give it a color. So as long as you bring the color down, this helps to blend things in. Now this first thing is this blur. So if this blur is too high, it's not gonna be very useful. I'm gonna bring it down pretty low. I don't want it to be so low so that the blur looks like it's etched in. I think I think we're pretty close here. Let's try, all right, four seems to look like it's working. It depends on your font, your size. You might need to adjust these settings. The next thing here is this slider here. This will fade in. Once you go too far, it's gonna go past your alpha channel. I don't wanna go too far past this point. That looks pretty good. It's adding a nice little highlight. The next thing I'm gonna do is skip over the shape thing because this is really esoteric. Let's go to this light setting and we'll change the height as you go down. This will make it more of a glancing rim light. As you bring this up, it'll be a light that looks like it's directly above. Season to taste here. And then this position X and Y controls the directional light if you want it to look like it's coming from a different angle. I rarely drag this thing around because it gets off screen and gets lost pretty quickly. So just clicking inside here and sliding is probably a safer bit. So if you go far enough, now it looks like the light is coming from the right. Drag the Y, it looks like it's coming from the bottom. Drag it the other way, it's gonna look like it's coming from uh, a terrible place. So let's undo back. All right, let's call let's call that good. We got kind of a underneath light and I'm happy with that. All right, so now let's take a look at this thing that it's just kind of like clipping in one direction or another. Two little dots here and when we click on them, there'll be one more in the middle and I could click and drag this over here. So you see how it's kind of clipping in? Undo that, click and drag on this one, bring it in. You see it's kind of clipping from the other direction. And then you've got, let's bring these both these two in. Then you got this middle one, which is I guess like a bias in one direction or another. And then if that wasn't enough, you can click and drag these up and down. So you see this little arrow here 
indicating. You can get some very interesting results. All right, once you add one plastic, it is difficult to control yourself and not add another one. So let's just go crazy. Command C with this selected, Command V. Now I selected red. I probably don't wanna do the same thing. So let's just hit this button to reset all and then hit blue. Now it's good, we know we got a clean slate here. I'm gonna again, bring the blur size down, set this to add, give myself a color. I chose blue before, bring this down a little bit, maybe shift it. Let's just stick with blue highlights. Now, what I'm gonna do is go to light. I'm gonna change this direction towards the right side by clicking and dragging an X, I'm gonna click and drag on the Y, try to bring it above. And let's adjust the height down a bit here. So our highlights are more of the edges. And let's go into shape and see if we could force this to do something decent. Bring that in, bring this one in, adjust the middle one. If it looks good, then you just keep going in that direction. I kind of have this set up. Now what I'm gonna do is try not to move this one left or right, just move it up or down. And this one also move it up or down. And I'm, I'm getting these nice little um, sharper highlights. So my first highlight was a little bit softer. This one here, a little bit sharper. So it just makes it look like it's coming from a different light and giving a little bit more variety. And I'll come back in and maybe adjust the um, setting here. Remember this slider will, will fade it in a little bit more. All right, let's call that good and liquidy. All right, let me click this button, go to one viewer, zoom in here and give this a play. All right, so this is definitely making me wanna go into the kitchen and, and mix up a few different flavors of Kool-Aid. 